And so what tends to happen when people die is there there is a power shift. Like right now, for example, nationally, there is the largest uh, wealth shift in American history into the hands of women, actually, because their husbands, the the boomer husbands are all dying (laughs) because men, you know, we don't take care of ourselves. Yeah. And so women are going to be richer than they've ever been. And then after the women start to pass, the Gen uh, Gen Xers are going to have trillions of dollars in wealth passed on to them. So, so these, you know, when people die, things change. Um, you know, one of my friends had a, uh, a, a girlfriend who, whose dad was, you know, he was a 52 year old player player. And so he had some money, he stayed in shape. So he had this young girlfriend about 32 years old, you know, he paid all the bills, took good care of her and all that stuff. And, but the girlfriend for obvious reasons, didn't appreciate, you know, her dad dating a girl that was the same age as her. So she didn't quite get along with this girl. So the guy lives with uh, the girlfriend and his mother lived there too. Uh, and so he's paying all the bills. Well, one day he finds out that did they say age ain't nothing but a number, but it's a very important number because, <laughs> because he had a, he had a stroke. And, uh, and so he had this stroke and he goes into a coma. So the mother and the girlfriend was stuck with this dilemma, but you know, how do we get the bills paid? You know, cause the money's all in his bank account. So they did what he probably wouldn't have had a problem with them doing this, but they took the cell phone and they used the face scan to get into his bank account. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they transferred over the money so they could pay the bills. So now, now you committed a federal crime pretty much. And so they're paying the bills and he's in the hospital. They're hoping he gets better. He doesn't get better. He dies. Suddenly that's when the state steps in. And they, and so the daughter suddenly it was, here's the thing in his, um, because he had no will, no trust, no nothing. Guess who inherited all of his stuff? I'm the daughter. Not. Okay. The daughter who hated the girlfriend's guts. So suddenly she owns the house. She owns get all, out. all the money in the bank. All right. She 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 sends the sheriff, get them out of here. <laughs> right. The grandma too. Like I don't know if Ooh, she grandma grandma. Too. Yeah, right. She's like, she's like, she's like, y'all gotta leave. Um, they go do a forensic investigation. Like, wait a minute, who took $70,000 out of the bank account? Oh, now, now you're a criminal and I can get you arrested. And it got messy. And and the thing is that we know, we know that her father probably wouldn't have wanted all this to happen. Of you know, he would, he was the last line of defense, but when that line of defense is gone, you know, bad things happen. So, so one thing that we do, you know, every day, you know, when we do our financial consciousness training, uh, and you and I were talking about the, the benefits of talking about economics every day. And I know you, you're, you're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to start telling people about that so they can go check you out as well. Um, is one thing about consciousness that uh, people miss is consciousness isn't just about understanding what's in front of you. It's about understanding the what ifs, or right. like playing out all the scenarios. And I don't know if we're really encouraged to really do that. Because if we did that, if we played out all the possibilities, like, okay, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this happens? What if that happens? And we're more strategic in that way, we would be more proactive in our actions. And I don't think we have a society that encourages us to be proactive 